Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 5. I made a whole separate video about the judging of this episode, so I won't talk about that much in the recap. Let's get started. The first one up is Mark Batiste, or Bat, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I know him from Sherlock, where he plays Sherlock's brother, usually with a bowler and a, and a bowler hat and a <laughs> umbrella, very formal. So it was fun to see him in this more informal type of setting. He's very, very tall and thin, and they put him in front of a brown background. But the artists really don't deal with the background very much, or we'll see if they do. So four hours into the program, they turn their easels around, and Mark is going to look at all three, and he's going to pick one to go home, which has nothing to do with the final judging, but is important that the artist is recognized. Here's the first one up. This is a very, very accurate portrayal of what, I mean, it's a real resemblance, and it also is from the old school of traditional paintings. It's rooted in the old masters. That's how this type of work is done. You have to be trained in this. This doesn't come naturally by any means. Later, the judges do admit and say that this is the best painting of the episode, but they do not cho choose it as a winner, and I made a separate video about that because uh, that was a little bit upsetting for me. So let's look at it from far away. Yeah, we pulled back. You know, this is what people generally want when they have their portraits taken. There's a reason for this timeless type of painting because people want a portrait to resemble them and, and to look timeless, and this, this work definitely does that. But that's not what the judges are looking. They're looking for new voices and new treatments. So the next one up is this monochromatic one. It does not have a resemblance to him. Monochromatic means that you simply have to really look at your, you always have to look at your values carefully, but you certainly can hide behind color. Now, my problem with this painting, if you've watched any of my videos, you or videos, you already know. It's an island surrounded by an ocean of water. Island surrounded by oceans painting. That's what I call this thing. I know he had four hours and maybe there was more, uh, she had four hours and maybe there was more she was going to do, but she needed to grab that paintbrush and make some lines that anchor those shoulders in. This one is less proficient than the ones that we've seen so far. So this person has just doesn't have the same type of training. And one of the issues that I have with this one is uh, there's a distortion in the head for sure. You can see that. You can see that on the side of the head. The other thing is it does not look, it looks deflated to me. It looks like, <laughs> I don't know how to, this, don't want, well, it just does. I know he was looking for, um, what he was trying to do was find the relaxation and the pose, which I think he did, but the result is it looks somewhat deflated and less alive than the previous participants work was and that that's just a personal choice on my part now mark picks one to take home and i'm not at all surprised that he picks this one wow of course that is a fantastic piece of painting so he should be very happy with that and i think anybody would be all right the next one up is tanny gray thompson she is a life peer i don't know what that means and a TV presenter, and also a Paralympian. So she is in a wheelchair. So that makes things just slightly different in terms of, really not in terms of anything, to tell you the truth, unless you're gonna deal with the whole figure. So let's see what happens. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and we get to see what they've done. And this looks like uh, we could have a pretty good competition in this second group. But let's see. All right, the first one up is this one. This is uh, tends to. This looks really chalky to me. And that's when you use a lot of titanium white in order to get your value, the value of your colors to be lighter instead of mixing for the correct color that will be lighter. And I just find that when someone relies too much on titanium white in order to get their value shifts, things end up looking kind of chalky, as if and meaning as if you know, you use chalk to make the painting as opposed to, say, luscious, rich paint. And from far away, there's some proportion issues. That neck is way too uh, large for the head. And also, if you squint your eyes, 
there really is there aren't a lot of value shifts the you know, pupils of the eyes maybe maybe the lips it, it's it's really um, not the strongest one here's the next one this person is slowly building up her forms which is nicely done she's not relying on titanium white to make those mixes she's making color value swap out choices in order to make an effective turning of the form so of course I'm going to respond to that because to me that's what painting is <laughs> Yeah. Now, from far away, I it I really, really like this painting. I like this painting just because um, I just think it stands alone as a really good painting. It's well composed, well anchored in, good value shifts, and a good range of values. Here's the next one, and this one suffers from... I know it's pencil, so I don't know that they would ever choose a, a pencil artist to be their winner because the final commission is a painting in a national gallery. But my problem with this one is you, there's not much of a value range. If you squint your eyes, everything is mid-value. Everything is mid-value. Yeah, you can say there are a couple darks. Maybe you can start to pick out, but no masses of darks. And it's those masses that start to give your, whatever you're painting, a sense of form and volume. And that's just not in this, even though it's beautifully rendered. So that's, that's where I am on this one. So Tanny's going to pick one to take home, and she picks the one I would have picked. It's just a nice piece. So, um, on to the next. Now the next one up is Georgina Campbell, and she is a model. And it's not really surprising to find out she's a model because you know, <laughs> they're all either models or actresses or actors for the most part. But, you know, she has that one of those beautiful symmetrical type of faces. So here we go. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first look. Uh-oh, that first one in the front looks a little problematic for me, but let's see what happens. Now this next person up, she's been on the program three times. Each time her picture is selected by the model. So she's been recognized in that way. But um, I don't know if she's gotten into the final judging. No, I think she's been passed up for the final judging. It was lovely to see her again. She's an excellent painter. She always gets a good likeness. And she's extremely competent. I think she shows up in Landscape Artist of the Year as well. So she, she's kind of familiar to me. Uh, it, it's beautiful work. It's just beautiful work. I mean, squint your eye. There's no chalkiness going on here. She's found her color values by doing mixing and then applying those mixes. Those mixes next to each other are what create the form as opposed to relying on a tit titanium white or some other medium to get those value shifts. So she understands color really well and how to build color. So nice job on that one. Now this one is very, very flat. It, uh, you don't really get a sense of the turning of the forms of any kind. I like the value range, you know, that's what I'm looking for. Not something that's all mid-tone, but something that has darks, mediums, and lights. But there isn't enough of a variety of darks, mediums, and lights. So the result is a very flat uh, painting overall. And it does not have a resemblance to her at all. That doesn't mean it isn't a valid painting. All these paintings have to stand on their own as good paintings, not just a painting of the specific person. Here's the next one, has a little bit more of a resemblance. Um, it's just, it, it, something about it feels pretty weak to me. I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Um, maybe it is, a, uh, I feel a tent tentativeness in the, in the um, applying of paint. Yes, yeah, see behind, see how dry that feels? And yet, uh, they were pretty thrilled about the drippy thing that she did on the on the bottom. Though per, uh, Georgina herself went on and on about the collarbone. She felt this woman had done the collarbone extremely well. That's a sign that you haven't nailed your painting really well when someone will find out one specific place to talk about because overall they're underwhelmed with the painting. So I was pretty sure this wasn't going to be her pick. Georgina's pick is the woman that I'm rooting for, which is this gal. And, you know, yay, once again, recognized as she should be. So I hope she keeps turning up if she doesn't win overall. So the next one, next part is the judging. Now the judging, what they do is they have all the artists line up and they're going to pick three of these people to go on to the semifinals of this episode, but only one will go forward to, the, to participate in the final episode of the program. 
So the first one up is this very academic work, which I just adore and honor and just, you know, there's nothing more I can say about it except look how, look how that flesh is rendered. Even just the ear. Oh my gosh. So much, so much. So, you know, I, I wish I had classical training to tell you the truth, but, uh, you know, you know, you have to, you have to be able to be in a place in life where you can participate and, and, and do that kind of training. All right, here's the next one up. I was glad to see that she was chosen. Clearly it's not a finished painting, but it's a good job. So let's look at a close up. Some of what I like about this is the color value swap out. I, you know, I love some blue thrown into the face. You know, she's re and, and there's a lot of work done around warms and cools here. You know, the background is extremely cool, but the figure is extremely warm. That's smart. That's a smart use of color. And here's the one from the woman who's participated three times. And, and you know, it's an impeccable piece of work. I, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's way up to the job. Now, the next thing that we do is we get to see uh, the two, two paintings together. One is the digital painting that they submitted to be on the program. It's always a self-portrait. That's the one on the left. So they have all the time in the world to do the one on the left. And then the final, and the piece they did today is on the right. Now, the one on the left, I've got to say, it's kind of unfinished. So that could be a problem because if that's as realized as she is capable of making a painting, it's not going to probably do the job that they need to have done. Remember the final, uh, the winner has a commission to do for a national gallery and it's going to be of a celebrity. So they, the judges are under some pressure because they've got to select a winner who can do this final commission. And did I mention the commission's $10,000? I think I did, I'm not sure, which is probably a, a great deal. But anyway, here's the next one up. She looks exactly like this. That self-portrait is just, you know, beautifully, beautifully done. And um, not a lot of difference between the one that, where she had a whole lot of time and the one that she did today. She certainly knows how to edit her work and, you know, get, the, I would say, <laughs> get the job done. She gets the job done. And I, I just think it's beautiful work. So we'll see how she does. Um, but she's got the next one to contend with because the next one the judges come right out and say this is the best painting. It was the best painting done today but what they didn't like about it was how hi the historical references and that they didn't know that the artist was showing up with any personality which I like I said made a separate video about because I don't understand that criticism at all. Beautiful work. So now we go on and let's let's take a look at all the fi the final paintings, the final judging, and let's look at all the paintings together. It's just a nice shot to see the the self-portraits and then the work they did today, followed by the self-portrait and the work they did today. And you just have to say, yay, everybody. Really great job, really great work. So out of these paintings, they have to pick one as the winner. And just to clarify, once again, we get to see the three artists that they picked today and the work, and one of them will be the winner. I would have advanced two of these people, the one on the far left and the one on the right, but uh, that's not what they're going to do. So the winner is, dun, 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 the winner is the woman who's shown up three different times and she's going to go forward. I'm thrilled for her, but I'm really baffled at the judging, which is why I made a separate video about that. So this was episode five. I haven't looked to see how many episodes there are. There usually are seven. So, so far we have five, five finalists. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please give me a thumbs up because YouTube really responds to that. And if you would subscribe, that would be fantastic. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.